These are the things you realize as soon as you try Mac alternatives. Let's get into it. Number 1. Dell XPS 16 There are tons of laptops out there trying to act like a MacBook, sleek, work-friendly, minimal. So I dug around to find the few that actually come close. Keep in mind, I'm not including gaming laptops here. That's a totally different category. MacBooks are for productivity, not RGB lighting and uh, 240 FPS. Let's kick it off with the Dell XPS 16. This machine looks amazing. It's made of 75% aluminum, and the keyboard feels high-end, especially the touch-sensitive function keys. It's not for everyone, especially if you type without looking, but visually clean. The screen is a 16.3 inches, 2K IPS panel with 120Hz refresh rate and 500 nits of brightness. Pretty solid, but if you've asked a MacBook Pro, you'll notice the difference. Apple's screens are just more vibrant and punchy, especially in sunlight. So if you love working on your balcony or in a bright space, keep that in mind. Spec-wise, you've got options. But for this comparison, I'm looking at Dell Space Config versus 14-inch MacBook Air M4, about the same about $1400 as Dell. M4 wins in single-core performance. Intel's Core Ultra 7 155H wins in multi-core. For casual stuff like browsing, writing, or light edits, the MacBook feels faster. But if you're into a 3D rendering, heavier video work, or scientific tasks, the Dell might edge out. But here's where MacBook takes the lead again. Power efficiency, battery life, fan noise, optimization. Dell doesn't include a dedicated GPU in the base model. You can add an RTX 4050 for $750, but then you're pushing over $2000 total. With that GPU, the Dell becomes a mini beast. Great for both work and play. The MacBooks aren't made for gaming anyway, so if that's what you need, you're better off looking at gaming laptops. Battery life? Not even close. MacBook gives you 18 hours. Dell barely pushes 8 under load. RAM? Mac OS handles 16GB way better than Windows does. Screen. Dell wins on the refresh rate. It has 120Hz compared to Apple's 60Hz. But color accuracy, tone control, and that Apple magic still belong to the MacBook. So things to realize, for the same price, MacBook Air M4 is better for portability, silent work, and creative tasks. But Dell XPS 16 is better for multitasking and heavy apps. If you add RTX 4050, it becomes a beast. But then at $2,090, $99, maybe just buy a gaming laptop or a higher-end MacBook instead. Or you can just buy the next laptop. Number 2. Asus ProArt P16 The moment you use this laptop, it just feels like a MacBook. And let's be honest, it kind of looks like one too. That's not a bad thing though. Companies started copying Apple's style for a reason, because it works. The Asus Pro Art P16 is basically designed like the well-known Zephyrus G16 for gaming. But the difference is that P16 is designed for edits, 3D rendering, and other tasks except gaming. Though gaming isn't that bad on this laptop, I'll discuss that later. For now, just look at the design. I think it's a Zephyrus design but with less flex. Just black, sleek, and minimal. Even the design screams, it's not for gaming. Get your hands off, you dirty gamer. Go touch some G16. And the ports are much wider compared to the previous Dell's ports. Dell wanted to copy Apple's only good sites but ended up copying the bad sites too. But let's compare the P16 with MacBook competitors at the same price. The cheapest model of the ProArt P16 is $2149. At least that was the price I found. For the same price, you can't buy a MacBook Pro, but for $2400 you can get the MacBook Pro with an M4 Pro chip. So there's about a $250 difference, and we'll only count it if the MacBook is noticeably better. The processors of both models are pretty much at the same level, I'd say because each has its pros and cons. The P16 CPU is AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370, while the MacBook Pro uses the M4 Pro. Both can be powerful for heavy tasks, but Ryzen handles it a bit better due to multi-core performance, while the M4 Pro offers better battery life instead, which kind of balances things. So it depends on how you use them. Now moving on to GPU. In this case, sorry Apple, but you can't beat RTX 4060's performance. RTX 4060 is better at everything except battery life. Video editing from any program except Final Cut of course since that's Apple's own, 3D rendering, gaming, but overall RTX 4060 is unbeaten. When it comes to RAM, ProArt also wins because in the base model you get 32GB while the MacBook gives you only 24GB. And it's 
obvious no matter what, 32 is better. But if a MacBook can't beat the Pro Art in GPU and RAM, then it can beat it in display, which is literally better at everything. Brightness, refresh rate, color accuracy, and more. Except resolution maybe. But hey, who actually uses or notices that big resolution on a 15 inch screen? You probably won't. Though the 5016 screen is not bad at all, it just can't overperform. MacBook is also better in battery life, lighter weight, and maybe sound quality. But if you look at the price difference, the Pro Art P16 is still a pretty solid option. The only real deal breaker is the 60Hz refresh rate, which isn't as smooth for that price. So of course, the thing you realize as soon as you try this Mac alternative is it's a great replacement. If you prefer Windows and Freedom over macOS and limited options, then P16 is the clearer choice. Number 3. Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 12 Though it doesn't remind you of a MacBook like the P16, at least its portability and size could probably remind you of a MacBook Air, with its tiny size but powerful system. This laptop's design isn't really a copy of the Mac's design as usual, but it has its own look. The laptop is so thin it could be really convenient as a mobile laptop, though not for editing heavy tasks. About ports, this laptop has all the ports you actually need. That's why I think it can be a really good thing compared to the MacBook Air, which has limited ports and even lacks HDMI, which has become a meme among MacBook Air users. Why don't they just add it? Lenovo does it, why doesn't Apple? But I think this laptop is more for corporate workers, engineers and developers, frequent travelers, and IT departments. Because the fingerprint access in the keyboard and general style of the laptop say it all. But since this video is called MacBook Alternatives, let's compare a MacBook at the same price. ThinkPad X1 car Carbon Gen 12 costs around $1400, and for that you can get a 13.6 inches MacBook Air with the new M4 chip, actually about $50 cheaper. And honestly, it's stronger, here's why. The CPU of the MacBook M4 is slightly better than the Intel Ultra 5 125U in the ThinkPad. In performance for everyday tasks, video editing, creative apps, AI tasks, and of course battery life. The ThinkPad is equipped with an Ultra 5 chip with the U-Index, which means it's not for heavy tasks. It's designed to conserve battery, and I think the ThinkPad X1 handles it well, because compared to other Windows or Linux laptops, it can last 14-15 hours easily on simple tasks. When it comes to GPU, the ThinkPad loses by a wide margin. It has no dedicated GPU, only Intel Arc, which is much weaker than the MacBook's M4 chip GPU. So because of this weak GPU, it's not good for gaming, 3D rendering, or any work that needs strong graphics performance. But if you gave this laptop to a younger version of me back in the day, I'd be grateful as hell. It would've felt like a blessing. But for this price today, I wouldn't buy it myself. Now let's talk about RAM and storage. The MacBook Air has slightly more RAM, 24GB versus 16GB, and the same storage. 512 gigabyte. That's very good for the MacBook, but not impressive for Lenovo. Display, both use IPS panels and both hate 500 nits brightness. But the MacBook screen has 2K resolution and way better color accuracy. P3 gamer, true tone, all that. Lenovo, just Full HD, no debate here. So what do you realize as soon as you try this MacBook alternative? You realize it's not even a real debate. MacBook still wins in almost every aspect. But that doesn't mean you have to buy a MacBook. For some people, the ThinkPad could still be a better fit. I mean, for those who prefer Linux, coding, launching virtual machines, engineering work, or something like that. But also, it can still be useful for light editing, writing, or working remotely while traveling. But personally, I choose the MacBook Air, or even a gaming laptop for this price. If you want to combine remote work with gaming, that would be way cooler. Honestly, today I really tried to compare those laptops that are most of the time considered as Mac alternatives by everyday users from Reddit and different forums. But here's the thing, it's not that simple. A lot of time when someone says, this is a Mac alternative, they're pointing at something like the Asus Zephyrus or Lenovo Legion Slim, which, let's be honest, are more like gaming beasts. Comparing those to a MacBook is like comparing a bear to a shark. Totally different categories. Gaming laptops are built around the GPU, they're amazing for games, no doubt. But manufacturers don't focus as much on top tier CPUs, it's all about balancing with the GPU. RAM is often slower and sometimes you get less of it. And yeah, the displays are fast, high refresh rates and all, but color accuracy usually takes a hit. That's why I didn't include gaming laptops in this list, I wanted to keep it fair and focused on productivity laptops. That's also why we only ended up with 3 real competitors. But hey, if you think you know 
know a better Mac alternative? Drop it in the comments. And let me know why you think it beats a MacBook. I'll be checking. And the links for all laptops mentioned in this video are in the description. So if you like the video, subscribe and take care.